Next up is the front apron. The front apron is going to get cut up and then glued back together. So we need, for the apron, we need a, a bottom strip, a top strip, and then a center strip. In this case, it's a three and a quarter less a half top bottom. So the center is two and a quarter. So we need to cut those out of this, uh, cut out the drawer front, glue it back together, of course, without the drawer front. Uh, when, when we make these cuts, now you can see here, this is the front apron, this is to be the back apron without the cutout. You know, these dados here are for the drawer supports. When we make these cuts, uh, I don't want to leave a lot of extra material because it just it just complicates things a bit. So so these are going to end up at a, ha a half inch top and bottom. I'm going to cut them at nine sixteenths, and then I can uh, I'll joint an edge after they're cut before we glue them back together. And then once it's glued together, I'll joint the outer part again to uh, to clean everything up. The uh, drawer or the front apron looks like this. This is my uh, piece here. You can uh, see that I've got a relatively straight grain here, and then this was the center of, of the board here. That's where the cathedrals were. So I'm going to start here. I'll joint this edge, uh, make my nine sixteenths cut, a two and a quarter cut, plus a, maybe a teeny bit for jointing and then another uh, 9 sixteenths cut. I'll start from this edge to, to minimize how much I get into the cathedrals. And uh, we'll see how that works out. There's always a little bit of a risk that these thinner cuts are going to warp a little bit. Uh, hopefully it won't be enough to uh, cause a problem. So let's go see how that works out. Okay, so uh, there's the three parts of the apron. Now, you notice I did go back and joint that uh, one uh, sawn edge. And let's see here, so I should be pretty close to two and a quarter. I'm just a touch over, that's okay, that's close enough. And those all go together nicely. That looks, that looks nice, and, nice and clean there. So the next thing I need to do is cut the uh, drawer front out 10 and a half inches. So what I'll do is I will find the center of this, measure out five and a quarter on either side and, and cut out the center part and we should be ready to go. So I notice too, I've got these marked so I remember where all the parts go. Right now I'm at uh, my my final dimension is 16 and three quarter. I'm at 17 and three quarter right now. So the way I figure out half of 17 and three quarter, so eight is half of 16, eight and a half is half of 17. And if I need to go another, th you know, th it's 17 and three quarter, so I need to go half of that three eighths. So so that should be the halfway point. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to I want to go ten and a half, so I'm going to pretend like the ten is uh, zero. And so if that's zero, half of ten and a half is five and a quarter. So that there's my five and a quarter. So I find that fairly easy. So ten and a half would be twenty. Twenty and a half. 
I'll mark that. And then go cut that on the chop saw. So on my chop saw, I have a, a piece of MDF on here most of the time, and it's clamped on here. And then when I make a cut, I've cut into the MDF. So I know that my uh, the left side of the blade is right there. So when I go to make a cut like this, I just have to line my line up with the edge of that part. It's very easy to do. And then I know I'm going to be cutting right at that spot. So I've got all of my uh, parts cut out now. Now notice before I left there, I just quickly put some marks on either side just to make it a little easier to see where those go. That's going to go like that. And of course that will be the, uh, the apron and there's the drawer front. So I think I'm good. So what I want to do next is just lightly sand the inside here just a little bit. Um, it's going to be a little, well, these are pretty clean, but I will just particularly the end grain. I'll sand that just a little bit. The, uh, because that's jointed, well, actually that, that edge, that's a sawn surface there. I had to take a look. It looks pretty good. Uh, so I will joint that, although it, no, I'm not going to join. I'm just going to sand a little bit. Now I want to be careful. I don't sand in this area i want to sand like you know kind of up to that just just a little bit i and if i sand where my joint is that will uh, compromise the joint so what i want to do here i'm just going to kind of center everything let me let's put that like that there we go so what i'm going to do now is mark where those parts go just so I know where where to avoid. So I've got my uh, parts here so there's the surface I want to sand so now if if I just start going I'm, I'm going to end up rounding this so I want to be very careful that I keep that flat. In a situation like this I try to think of my sanding block as, as being not much bigger than that surface, right? If, if the sanding block was that small, I would have a hard time rocking it. But the fact that it's so much bigger, you know, it's easy to rock it. So what I'm going to do, I'm first going to switch, switch to the hard side. I've got a hard side and a cork side here. And what I'm going to do, I'm only going to put pressure over this surface and I'm only going to take short strokes. So if I do that, it's pretty unlikely I'm going to rock the uh, rock the sanding block and yeah, see that cleans up pretty nicely. That's 150. I'm going to stay on the hard side of the block here. Not pushing particularly hard here. There, see that end grain is looking great. And then I'll finish at 240. I do have the cork side now. That looks great. Okay, so that goes pretty quickly. If I don't talk, Okay, looks great. Notice I, I do try and kind of change the direction a little bit. That, that seems to help remove the scratches. And then I want to do the, uh, these other part, make sure I'm doing the right surfaces. So I want to do the inside of this one. And I've got my marks there. So I don't want to 
sand past, past that mark. Turn that around. There we go. And this doesn't, yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's the inside of the drawer, right? And theoretically, no one would ever see this unless I took the drawer out. Okay, so I'll continue. So I've got my parts sanded now and I'm ready to glue up. So if I, if I take a look here, squeeze those together, everything looks great. I don't, I don't see uh, the seams there and uh, the drawer front looks, looks great, fits right in. So when I glue this up, I want to leave a little bit of a gap in here. You know, ideally close to the gap that I'm going to have when the when the project is all done here. So what I'm going to do, instead of trying to you know estimate a gap, I'm going to use some uh, blue tape. I think just a couple of uh, thicknesses on both sides. So I'm going to tear off some tape here. And I just measured this. I had not done that before. And this blue tape is about four, four thousandths thick, a little thicker than a piece of uh, copy paper. Four pieces will get me about sixteen thousandths, which is which is about a sixty-fourth of an inch. So I'm going to put that on either end here, and then. <clears throat> When I glue this up, uh, that'll give me a little little gap on either side. And then that plus, you know, when I sand the drawer, it's going to get slightly smaller. That should work out just fine. And, you know, I don't have to worry about expansion and contraction with, with the width of the drawer because all the grain is going that direction. So so I think that's going to work fine. Now, the, the other thing I need to do, if I, if I glued it up like this, um, I'm not going to be, be able to get the drawer front out. So I'm going to glue it with the drawer front like that, and then I can I can remove that once the clamps are on. Now the other thing I need to watch for is I want to align these these pieces here. So so what I'm going to do I'm going to use some of my stickers. Now I, most of my stickers are are three quarters of an inch square. I do have some that are three quarter by three eighths, and I try when I cut these to yeah, they're just stickers, right? So you think not a big deal, but I try to make sure they're really close to three quarters of an inch in the width dimension. And and if you know on the three eighths, I'll cut them three eighths. Um, but like I said, most of them are three quarter square. But these are three quarter by three eighths. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use these to align those parts like that. And then once. Once I, when I glue that up, right, I can stick that back in there. All right, now make sure everything's centered. And I've got some um, some F clamps here that should work just fine for that. I, I, the bar clamp would be too big, and I think that's going to work good. So I'll uh, throw some glue on there. Uh, you know, I'll be pushing those down onto there to make sure everything's aligned. And uh, I should have a pretty good, uh, pretty good glue up there. Okay, so I've got everything uh, uh, set up here. I, I want to kind of walk through the process, uh, make sure my clamps are set, everything's situated here. So I did, I did move these uh, stickers up to make it easier to clamp. If they're coming down here, that's going to be in the way of the clamp. I've got the clamp situated on either side. I've, I'm down near the bottom of my glue bottle, so I've got it sitting on side. I think I'm good to go, so let's do it. So I'm keeping the glue pretty thin right at the uh, corner there. I don't want much squeeze out. This was, if this was a bigger surface, I'd be uh, using a roller, but 
my fingers just fine for this small surface area. And remember, I, I can still see my pencil lines there. Making sure everything's down tight against there. Okay, so that looks okay. And I'm really trying to make sure everything's flush there. That looks good. Making sure the clamps aren't, aren't crooked there. Okay, that looks good. And I got, I zoom in there, you might be able to see a little better. Just a little bit of squeeze out inside there, so. So I have a, a chisel that I only use for uh, scraping glue. It's uh, not super sharp, so it doesn't cut into the wood, but it's, it's my glue scraping chisel. You know, it was a swap meet purchase for a couple bucks. Okay. And since I, I don't have much squeeze out there, I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that now. Normally I'd let it get gummy. Okay, I think that's gonna work just fine. I'll, I'll flip that over and clean up the rest of it. One thing I neglected to uh, point out, and it was, was not an issue with, with my uh, part here, but sometimes, when you have uh, milled these parts, they're not going to be straight. And when you glue up your uh, assembly here, it's possible to glue this so that your th th these parts are not straight. Now, I'm, I'm assuming this is pretty straight. Yeah, it looks, looks fine. But even, even if these are straight, if you're not careful when you're clamping, you can actually, you know, make, you know, this distance slightly longer than this distance and you're going to put a curve in your part. Or like I said, if, if these parts are not perfectly straight after you've sawn them. So, so what you would want to do, you would certainly know that ahead of time, is, is when you clamp this up, clamp it to something you know is straight. So, so now I would be clamping like this. You could, you could even put another board over here and then you would only need uh, one clamp on each end because you'd have calls there. Uh, so that might even be easier. But just, just know that if this is not straight, and that, that is certainly a possibility, you need to clamp it to something that, that you know is straight to make sure that... Uh, you get a straight part. Obviously, you don't want your, your apron curved. 